Yo, let me ask y'all a question. Can your customers hear your brand's voice loud and clear? Maybe it's muffled with a little inconsistent targeting and marketing. Maybe you might be talking to them, but they're not quite sure who you're speaking to. Or worst of all, maybe you're speaking the entirely wrong language. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to speak directly to your most important customers and create a brand voice that is clear and pitch perfect and sings more like Jennifer Hudson and less like Jennifer Lopez. So let's get it. Welcome to the Marketing for the Culture podcast, powered by the African American Marketing Association. Each week, we'll bring you an insightful conversation from some of the best experts in our industry on how to advance our career. Join the collective of Black marketers across the world advancing their brand as we work towards creating a collaborative community. Yo, what's happening? What up, though? What it do, folks? It's your homie, C.L. Palmer, a.k.a. CZ Pie Game, back again on another edition of the Marketing for the Culture podcast, where we discuss techniques, technology, and the mindset that it takes for marketers to get to the top of their game. Now, today's topic is brand voice. One of my favorite subjects, because a brand voice really sets the tone for the rest of your marketing. It's a top-down approach. And I'm a slogan writer, and I truly believe that starting with your slogan and even your mission statement, you can have a top-down approach that trickles down into your content, advertising, and even your interactions with your customers. So what is a brand voice? Now, if you get on the internet, there's a lot of different definitions but I'm gonna give you my own personal one. So a brand voice in my book consists of culture-filled, relatable communications that send clear signals that a brand is the right one for a consumer without hesitation. Let me say that one more time so you can catch all of that. A brand voice consists of culture-filled, relatable communications that send a clear signal that a brand is right for a consumer without hesitation. Now, some of that might be a little redundant. I could tighten that up, sure. But I wanted to just put the emphasis on clear and without hesitation because a brand voice that is doing its job is a signal, it's a flag, it's a flare that you should be here because you want the result that I'm giving. You want the product that I have available. I want to help you get to that destination and you are in the right place. That's what a brand voice does for you. So here are four things that you can do to get your brand's voice, to be pitch perfect like Jennifer Hudson, and to get you into the spotlight. (laughs) And they are defining yourself and who they are, meaning your target, making sure that your messaging is consistent across all platforms, Connecting, connecting with your audience, in the language that they speak. And most importantly, speak on the journey. So I want to begin by getting your mind in the correct place before we just get into the meat. Before we get into the nitty gritty. Oh, yeah, yeah. So before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to just set the stage I want you to think about how some of the big brands who have mastered brand voice and have created an environment where customers don't hesitate to be loyal to the brand. So let me ask y'all another question. What do you think when you hear, just do it? Think different. We love to see you smile. Always low prices. 
I know some of you will go straight to the brand names, the Nike, Apple, Walmart, McDonald's. But what these powerful slogans are doing are connecting to an individual's need to get a result. Always low prices communicates that when you shop at Walmart, you may get the best deal possible without a coupon. When you're living in a world where most computers are windows, you have to think different to consider Apple. When someone tells you they love to see you smile, they make you feel welcome and wanted at that. When someone is trying to accomplish something in the realm of athletics, in the realm of everyday life, there are things that you just have to do. When it's time to train and you have to get up five in the morning, you just do it. When you have to get your kids ready for school and get to work, you just do it. Now that mortgage will make you act right. <laughs> But why do you make sure that your shirt is clean? You just do it because that's what you represent. That's what you're doing. And I want you to really think about how these people have created atmospheres around what they do. Think about Nike. You know, we're to, I'd say just do it. So think about Nike and all of their marketing. How many times have you ever looked at a Nike commercial and someone is standing? That doesn't happen because they're always in action, always in motion, always doing something. The athletes are the doers. They don't get paid to train. They get paid to perform. But in order to perform your best, you just have to do the training. And that's really the whole ethos of Just Do It and how Nike gets down. Now, on the other hand, when you look at Apple, Apple's Think Different has been de-emphasized in recent times, but you'll find it here and there because they encourage Think Different. Look at the two versions of their logos. One Rainbow stripes, all colors, think different. Think in color. Then they got a white logo, a blank canvas, emptiness, somewhere for you to start creating. They both are in the same voice, but they're giving off a little bit of a more refined definition of the voice because when they thought about think different they were encouraging the thought now they're encouraging the creator and i think it's a big distinction um as far as apple goes and if you look at the way that they move their products from shot on iphone to uh, even working with Adobe to make sure that all of Adobe's creative apps work natively on their silicon chips. That is a commitment to the creator. All right, so now that you got your mind set up on how some of the big boys do it and the big girls do it, let's talk about defining who you are and who they are. 
Now, a lot of times when we talk about who our target audience, target market is, we usually refer to mostly demographics, but I think we need to start incorporating more psychographics or how they behave, what they like, what they engage with already. We have to start digging deep into what we value, not only personally, but what we value when it comes to how we do business. Do you have a business that is set up to service a handful or is this a service for many? Are you servicing high end clients or are you serving an everyday person? We also have to think about the values of the person problem that we are trying to solve. We also have to think about the values of the person whose problems we are trying to solve. You need to start thinking a little deeper. People want a car, but do they need a car to get back and forth to work and save gas? Or do they need a car that carries kids back and forth to practice? There are a lot of different things that you can consider when you're defining who it is that values you the most. Think about the person who loves to go out to eat and eat at the best restaurants. Now think about the person who gets the satisfaction of making every single meal from scratch. Now, these characteristics are not mutually exclusive but they do show a preference and their preference is based on a personal value. And when we're considering who we want to come to us, who are we serving? We need to think about the ways that how we say they get down. Your get down is probably the most important thing about the way you carry yourself in the world. And everybody that you are trying to reach feels the same way. So when you start appealing to the get down and less of the pricing, then you'll probably get more business and you'll start seeing a little bit more interaction because people want to talk to you because they think the same way you think and they feel like y'all should be together, whether that's through a service or a product, you should have some type of relationship. Now that we've talked about who you're talking to and where you're talking to, now it's time to talk about what you're saying. Think about connecting with your audience, your target market, with the right language. Every community, Every industry, every country has a different dialect, language, lingo, and connected tissue that signifies that the person that you're talking to knows almost everything they need to know to go forward with you. I'm going to give you a great example. Now, if I'm at a basketball game and I talk to someone and their conversation begins with, you know, I like plus minus but true shooting percentage does a little bit more for me as far as evaluating who's being effective with their shooting. Now that person is a basketball nerd of the highest level, but that's my language. That's what I speak. I speak basketball nerd. 
I speak double high screens. I speak weak side action. I sc- back door. All of those things are basketball terminology that is used not in regular basketball conversation. It's for basketball people, not basketball conversations. I can have a basketball conversation with you and talk about why I think LeBron James is the best player of all time. That's a basketball conversation with anyone. There's a little bit of a difference. It sounds seem like it, yeah. So you have to inject culture of your market into your marketing. Because they need to understand that you understand them. And if you're not speaking in their language, then you might be talking to someone else and I might not even know. So now we're getting to the last point. We've talked about who your target market is. We've talked about where they are, platforms, and we've talked about What to say with the language. Now we're going to speak on the journey that your customer is currently on. This may be some of the most important parts of your brand voice because if you don't recognize the journey, then it's going to be hard for you to really nail down your marketing and get people to understand what you can do for them. So there are two places in the journey that we're going to focus on. And I don't think it's going to be that hard to guess. But number one, where they are. Where are they right now? And number two, where do they want to be with the result that your service or product brings them? Basically, present self and future self. We talk about affirmations, um, visualization, a lot of different mental techniques, thinking about where we want to be, helping ourselves think forward. And when we're marketing, one of the biggest things that you can do Let's talk about the result. Now, in order to talk about the result, you have to talk about where they are right now. And your job as a marketer is to clearly explain what transformation is going to take place and what's the result that they will receive. So most people, when they approach me in their business journey, they are at a point where they made a little money, they have a brand name, it's got a little weight, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're okay. You know, maybe not growing as fast as they would like. Maybe people are having trouble remembering how to spell the business name or put the URL in right, maybe they are just unhappy with some of the decisions that they made early on. And so what happens is the transformation that takes place is they have succinct language and they can find a catchy way to express who they are and what they do. That's kind of it in a nutshell. You go in on one side, you come out the other. You want to lose weight, you go in fat one side and skinny on the other. You want a transformation. You want to stop smoking. You see a hypnotist. You put the patches on. You chew the gum. What's the result that you want? You want to stop smoking. Why do you want to stop smoking? Because you want to be more healthy. 
You want to smell better. You want to spend less money on something that's not actually adding value to your life. So we have to think real deep about what's the result? What are we getting at? What do people actually want from us? Think about where they are right now on their journey and where they want to be. You are bridging the gap and your marketing should express all of it. So to recap, we talked about defining who you are and defining who values you the most. Making your messaging consistent across all channels. Connecting with your audience in a language that they speak. And speaking to the journey wherever your customers might be. So I hope this episode was helpful. If this was any value, please share it, like it, subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what was your biggest takeaway. Do you think that anything I said was wrong? Is there something that you would like me to go more in depth with? I'm at CZ Pie Gang on most platforms or CL Pie Gang, depending on where you're at on Twitter. Shout out. But either way, y'all come hit me up. Let me know what y'all think. This is something new I'm trying with marketing for the culture. I don't do a lot of solo podcasts, but I'm making my own transformation. I'm brand new. This is CZ. And thank you for listening and watching. And I'm out. Peace. Thank you for listening to Marketing for the Culture podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe, whether it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. And of course, our videos are on YouTube. If you have a moment, feel free to give us a rate, review, or just comment. We appreciate our sponsors for their continuous support. Also, if you're interested in learning more about our sponsors or becoming a member of the African American Marketing Association, visit aa-ma.org.